everybody. This is the next episode of Decant with D. I am Dietmar Ostermann and I am just a regular guy from Long Island who happens to be a wine connoisseur. I don't get paid by any of those vineyards. I just love to drink wine and I'm recommending wines that I like. I've selected for you tonight for a top-notch show three Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignons under $30 in price. We did two shows before. We did the rock stars of Napa Valley Cabernet. We did some hidden jewels that nobody really knew. And now we're doing the more affordable top-notch wines from Napa Valley. Cabernet Sauvignon is the king of the grapes. My favorite grape. It is powerful. It has typically blackberry and blackcurrant flavors. That's why I'm so fascinated by California Cabernet Sauvignon. And as you may have heard me say before, Napa Valley is the king of the valleys. It is this beautiful stretch of um, land with the mountains in the valley that is um, shielded from the Pacific Ocean a little bit further inland than Sonoma Valley and therefore better protected. It has cool nights, warm days, and a beautiful uh, ground for growing Cabernet grapes. So the three vintners that we're introducing here today, one of them a legend in Napa Valley, Robert Mondavi. Arguably, Robert Mondavi put Napa Valley on the map. He was the first that built a massive visitor center, impressive, and invited people in the vineyard to taste the wines. We will also taste tonight the Hess collection, a special favorite of mine, very affordable, very fruity, very excited to taste that tonight. And then finally, a much less known wine, but nonetheless, very, very good, a heavy bottle, bigger and heavier than the others, the Buena Vista. So those are the three Cabernets that we are looking into. I have my equipment right here. As you know by now, I prefer old fashioned corkscrews. They work most of the times. Let me open the first bottle. Let's get right to it. I typically use big glasses because that gives the opportunity to the wine uh, to unfold and interact with oxygen. This precision equipment from Italy. I bought this corkscrew at the Barolo Wine Library in Barolo, Italy. Let's just um, start with the first step of our wine tasting process. And that is looking at the wine. And when I look at the wine, I really look at both the wine by itself as well as the bottle. So this wine is dark, purple. It has beautiful lines in the glass. If you're looking at the bottle, it is the typical Robert Mondavi understatement bottle with a beige label. Uh, the vineyard, the showroom is shown on the label. Beautiful. Step two of my wine tasting is giving it a sniff. I'd like you to put your nose right into the glass. Wow, it's a fruit in your face type of statement. I like to sniff it a number of times. I like to shake it also, or I, you can see I have these decanters here. I like to decant my wines. Typically a year, 10 years or older, I always decant, but even younger wines, uh, it can never hurt. It can only make the wine better. Yeah, blackberry, uh, some blackcurrant strong food flavors in the aroma. Now the third step is actually putting it onto your palate, into your mouth. And as my friend Gary V says, give it a whirl. So let's give it a whirl. Mmm. Mmm. Intense. Strong flavors. So this is a 2014 wine. You will notice that typically when I taste wines, Cabernet Sauvignons, I give them 
four years for sure, five years. So at this point in 2020, I would never touch a 2018, never touch a 2017, if they're even out. Yes, the 2016 are very drinkable, but 2014 typically is ready now. You can also drink a 2013, 2012, and a 2015. 2016 is still a little bit young. This wine is so strong, easily can go another year or two in the bottle. So this is a 2014. I would recommend to drink this probably in two years or in one year. Let me just try it again. It was so good. Fruit explosions in the mouth. A medium long finish. That's the fourth step of the wine tasting. How long, how good is the finish? Very pleasant. This wine still has a lot of tannins in it because it can go for another year or two in the bottle easily. You feel that when you swallow it and that is the fourth step of the wine. So I recommend not to get drunk in these wine tastings. So I pour that wine away and we're going to the second contestant. So the second one is a S. Now keep in mind, all these wines are around $30. In fact, I have written down here the Hess I got for $29. The uh, Robert Mondavi that you've just tasted was about $30. And the Buena Vista that we will taste here in a minute is about $33. I also am very active on Vivino. Vivino is the best wine app in the world. It's a wine app where wine enthusiasts as well as beginners are rating wines and tasting them and are basically telling you truthfully what they thought about this wine. So the culmination of all those ratings gives a popular vote. So the Robert Mondavi that we just tasted was 3.9 on a scale from 0 to 5 at Vivino. This has is a 4.1, so two notches higher and uh, Vivino for the 2014. So now I'm doing something that you may not be entirely familiar with. I am, instead of washing out the glass with water, I'm washing it out with the next wine. That helps to prepare the glass. Wine and water don't interact well together. So that's why I'd like to prepare the glass with the next wine. Okay, this is the Hess. The color is even darker. It's a beautiful violet. I'm holding it against the background of the Great South Bay and you see beautiful legs in the glass. You probably can see those legs right out there from the camera. Looking at the label, the label is very different. You don't find too many Napa Valley caps with a label that is mostly purple with gold writing on it. But still, it is simple, it's elegant, uh, gets good rating notes from me. So, appearance, great. Let's go to the Sniffy Sniff. Fruit, aromas of berry, blackberry, black currant, a little bit of leather. Not as intense as the Robert Mondavi. Still very good, but not as intense. I like the Robert Mondavi a little bit better on the palate. The finish is shorter. I also like the finish of the Robert Mondavi better, but still very, very good wine. It would go very well with a steak, with beef in general, game, strong wine. All right, let's pour it away again. And let's go to the final contestant of tonight's tasting, the Buena Vista 2015 Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. Italian equipment, 99% foolproof. Precision gear. Don't put it all the way in. Leave yourself a lever. Goes out easily. Now I have drunk in this wine before. I know it's big. So for this wine and also demonstrated, I'm using the decanter. 
pour the wine in here. Cabernets 2014, 15, 16 don't necessarily need to be decanted, but again, it cannot hurt, it can only help because it gives the wine more breathing room, will oxidate the wine. Okay. Preparing the glass. Shaking it a little bit and pouring it away. Okay. Let's check out the Buena Vista. This is the newest wine in my repertoire. Mondavi I've been drinking forever, Hesse I've been drinking forever, but the, um, the Chateau Buena Vista from Napa Valley I just discovered about a year ago and is phenomenal. So let's see. The color, dark purple, great legs, beautiful. Probably the best color of the three wines. Let's look at the bottle. Heavy bottle. Bigger and heavier than the other two. Makes a rich, strong appearance. Conservative beige label. Good writing, vineyard, impressed on the bottle. I like it. So appearance is good. Let's give it a sniff fruit. I'd say a little bit of red fruit and black fruit in this one. Dark, dense, blackberry for sure is in here, black currant. But not as much in your face from a fruit forward perspective as the Hess or the Robert Mondavi. Let's give it a whirl. Very good. A little bit more sour, a little bit sweeter, but elegant. Very, very good. Out of those three, I have to say I probably like the Robert Mondavi the best, at least tonight. It changes. So if I would be drinking the same wines a year from now, I could be coming up with a different results. Also, if I would be drinking these three wines, at the same time as I ate dinner, like let's say a steak or a deer, it may change perspective as well. So these are three great Napa Valley Cabernets at around $30. And I recommend that you try them too. And please don't forget to follow me on Vivino. I'm a heavy wine raider on Vivino. And also follow me on this series on my YouTube account. And please write to me, what Napa Valley Cabernets do you prefer? And then I will write you back and maybe I have one of those wines on my next tastings. Thank you very much. Talk to you next time. <music>